Hello, Patrick here with Urban Carry Holsters, and today we're going to be showing you how to field strip and properly clean the Sig Sauer Scorpion 1911. This firearm combines the 1911's proven combat effectiveness, Sig's legendary quality, and modern materials and design to give you a straight from the factory, high end, high functioning pistol that's worthy of concealed carry, home defense, or even competition. The Scorpion comes in either the uh, government, which SIG refers to as the full size, which has a five inch barrel, or the uh, commander size, which SIG calls the carry size, which is a 4.25 inch barrel. We're gonna go over some additional details about this firearm later on, but for now, we're gonna turn this over to Chase, who's gonna show us how to take it apart and clean it. I'm gonna be doing a field strip and cleaning of the SIG Sauer 1911 Scorpion. Um, I've done another uh, SIG Sauer uh, 1911 video before of uh, a uh, field strip and cleaning and it's going to be uh, pretty much exactly the same um, of course if you know our customers want make sure that you comment on these videos because this is also a gun that has you know ambidextrous safety a couple of different things and we could go through a full breakdown of this video if you guys want but first what we're going to do is make sure that this firearm is clear and of all ammunition to make sure that it's safe so I'm going to eject the mag, make sure there's nothing inside, and then go ahead and rack that slide back so you guys can see that there are no rounds in the chamber. But just like the video before uh, about the SIG 1911, um, it does take down just like you know a standard government model Colt 1911. What you're going to do is turn up your gun upright, and this is your recoil spring plunger. Okay, you want to depress that and move this, which is called your barrel, your barrel lug. Well, I mean, your barrel bushing. I'm sorry, this is the barrel bushing, and you want to move it off to the left hand side. That'll allow for this spring and this spring plunge to come out. So, what I do is I'll just take the plunger and I'll set it off to the side. Now, you have two little marks on this firearm in the slide one is for the slide catch. Okay, which is up front here, and then you also have the takedown notch, which is a little half moon or quarter moon type uh, notch. And this, what you want to do is line it up with the back of your of your slide catch. Okay, that way there's a little hook in there that it needs to go through so you can disassemble it. But since the spring is off of tension, it's very easy to move the slide. So just go ahead and line that up. And from the other side, push on this pin, okay? This is, that, this is basically your slide catch pin or your takedown pin. So just push on it and then lift out your slide catch. After you do that, all you need to do is take your slide and frame apart, okay? You take your spring out and your guide rod. It's a very small guide rod. Um, these do come apart. And just for reference, if you do take them apart, there's this part of the spring that is wound tight towards the bottom to make a flat surface. And then on this other side, you have the spring that comes out not so much, okay? It just ends, all right? But make sure when you do put your guide rod and your spring back together that you do the flat compounded end on the guide rod. But now that we have that off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our, our barrel bushing and it was off to the left before. Now we're gonna rotate it to the right. This will allow for you to take this barrel bushing off. Okay, there's this little notch that's right here. Okay, this needs to go in one way and come out one way. Okay, if you have it uh, set off, you know, more to the left, that thing's not gonna come out. Again, that's why it just locks it in. Make sure that your barrel is secure. Once you do that, Move your barrel lug, which is right down here, okay, to the down position and kind of lift out your barrel a little bit and pull it out through the front of the slide. So first we're going to work on the barrel. Uh, what we want to do is get some gun cleaner in here. Um, here I use a Hobby's Elite gun cleaner. Um, it helps get rid of all that powder fouling, which is like excess uh, unburnt powder or powder residue and all the copper and brass shavings that adhere to your gun. This will help start breaking them down, making it easier to clean. But all I'm gonna do is, of course you could take one of these leads on a cleaning rod, okay, and just 
put a, um, a patch through and run it through with some gun cleaner. But an easier way is if you just have one, one cleaning rod, okay, just put your brush on and then wrap that pad around your brush, okay? Again, we're just trying to coat the inside of the barrel. So I'm gonna just give this a couple of sprays. And then just give it a good run through. And as you noticed, I'm going in through the back side of the barrel. Um, this is important because you don't want to mess up your crown. The crown is where the rifling ends inside of your barrel. And if you nick it or scratch it, it could affect your accuracy. And of course, we want to be as accurate as possible. So I always go in through the bore side. You can, however, go in through the front. But I would suggest getting one of these these uh, cone bushings. This will sit right inside, protecting the crown from your guide rod. Okay, this is a brass guide rod, but that doesn't mean that it can't hurt that crown in some way. But now that we have a coating inside the barrel, okay, I'm gonna take this pad off, which still has cleaner on it, and I'm gonna address my barrel lug and my feed ramp. Okay, there's a little bit of a feed ramp on this bore, so. And you just want to make sure that you get all around that. Any kind of discoloration, you want to get some of this cleaner on so it can start breaking down that powder fouling. But now that we've done that, okay, I'm going to move on to the slide. Now the easiest way to get gun cleaner on your slide, I feel, is a nylon brush. I have these ones that are for gun cleaning, but you can also use just a standard toothbrush. Okay, I wouldn't suggest using that toothbrush afterwards on your teeth, but again, this is just for gun cleaning. <laughs> um, but where you're gonna wanna address is mainly uh, your slide rails, okay? Again, don't want any kind of deposits in there. Just get a nice little coating. That way you can start lifting up any of that powder filing. There's little barrel grooves inside of here, if you can see. Okay, this is another place where powder can build up. So I'm gonna give that a little scrub down. Near, underneath, the bolt face, okay, this slides along the other rounds inside the barrel, uh, inside the magazine for when one is engaged, and it'll pick up that brass and other powder fouling. Again, it's just a good idea to give it, you know, a good scrub. Then the rest of what cleaner I have on my brush, I'm going to address my bolt face. Now, your bolt face is where basically your firing pin would be coming out of. Now, what I do is I always turn it upside down. That way I don't get any kind of uh, solution inside of my firing pin system. So again, give that a little scrub. Again, you have an external extractor. Make sure you get kind of behind that. That's where, you know, if it, your extractor ends up getting too much gunk behind it, it's going to sit out, okay, just like this. And then your rounds aren't going to eject properly. And again, this gun is semi-automatic and you don't need it to become a single shot. So just make sure, again, any place where there's a little bit of discoloring, I just go over with some of the cleaner, and I'm gonna let it sit. So now that we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and address the frame. Now as you can see, there's discoloration right near the feed ramp that's in here, okay, towards the back, towards the hammer. So I'm gonna put a little bit more gun cleaner on my brush, and I'm gonna make sure that I get in all those areas that are discolored. Okay, make sure you scrub, scrub that feed ramp. Again, that's very important. And get your slide rails, or I mean your frame rails. And don't think for a moment that the, like any kind of hard scrubbing with the nylon is going to take any of the sear coat off. That stuff is baked on. You're not gonna you're not gonna really hurt it that by any means with a nylon brush. But again, any place where you know that gas from the firing a shot can go, okay, you wanna make sure that you get all around it. All right, as you can see, I'm even scrubbing inside of the mag well. Okay, I'm scrubbing towards the back where your mainspring is. Okay, if you actually look down the magazine well, you'll be able to see it. Go ahead and get some of that cleaner on there. And then also up towards the trigger and the trigger bars. And we want to let that sit. Now, I try to address this in every single video. Sometimes I forget. But you also want to be able to clean your magazine. Okay, this is something that people forget all the time. It has these little holes. 
Also, I mean, the rounds sit right here to go and getting J engaged in a chamber. When it fires, all kinds of gas is going to go through here. And it's just important to clean every once in a while. Again, you don't have to do it every single time that you go shooting, but it is important to clean. And so basically how you take this down, I'm just going to show you how to take it down. I'm not going to clean it. But you just want to depress this little pin that's inside this hole on, the, on your base plate of your mag. And once you do that, you can start sliding your, your base plate off. Now, with this, these have these little lips, and there is this metal buffer pad, okay? This also slides forward, okay? Then it reveals your spring. And then, of course, what you want to do is take a brush, um, take cleaning cloths, whatever you can use, get gun cleaner in here, and then let it sit, and then wipe it down. Same thing, put it on your mag, um, your, well, your mag spring, and then let it sit, wipe it off. Again, it's just important to do this every once in a while. Um, it just will help you in the end. <laughs> so what I need to do is depress that buffer pad a little bit as I'm sliding this on. As you can see, it's going on to these grooves. Then just push it right back on, and it seats itself. But again, just as a note, make sure you clean your mags every once in a while. But now that the gun cleaning solution has been sitting on, the, on all the parts, we're going to go ahead and start wiping it down and scrubbing it out. So again, I have my 40 caliber brush already ready. I'm going to go through the back end of the barrel. And I'm just going to give this a couple of swab outs. That way we can get inside all the rifling and get that powder off. So after I do that, I'm going to take one of my cleaning swabs and make sure that I pick all that stuff that I decided to scrub. Again, that's why the brush usually hangs onto the cloth. But you see all that, that powder residue? That's why we do clean our gun. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing. The places that I addressed it to gun cleaner, okay, which would be the barrel lug down here. Okay, also this feed ramp. And then, of course, we're going to wipe down all the rest of the parts of our gun. We have our slide. Okay, I usually start off with a cloth. That way I can get, you know, most of the, the, bigger, the bigger deposits of powder. But my fingers can't fit everywhere. So what I do have are these little cleaning Q-tips. And of course you can use just regular Q-tips. Those do just fine. But this kind of helps you get a little bit more into all the little nooks and crannies. Okay, again, make sure that you just go over every single part of the gun, your slide rails again. Okay, your bolt face behind your extractor. These are all important places. But anywhere you'll see discoloration. Okay, so that's basically our slide. And then of course we're gonna do the same thing to our frame. Anywhere you put that gun cleaner, I wanna try and just wipe off. Again, I'm starting off with this cleaning cleaning swab, and then I'll move on to one of those little Q-tips. That way I can get a little bit more in depth with the cleaning. As you can see, this is all stuff that gets stuck in your gun. Again, uh, a lot of this is just using your best judgment. Okay, you see moving parts. Okay, they're most likely gonna need to be cleaned. Okay, make sure you get in towards your trigger. Your mainspring housing. And again, that's all stuff that's going to be stuck in your gun. But overall, most of everything is clean. Um, one more thing that I'll clean 
is our recoil spring. Okay, just gonna wipe it down with some gun cleaner. I'm actually gonna take it off and also get my guide rod. As short as the guide rod is, it still would be nice to clean it every once in a while. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll fold it in half and get it in between the springs. And then what you do is just hold on to it and start rotating your spring. Okay, this will start spinning up and that way you can get on every single little coil. And then, of course, you'd want to let all this gun cleaner sit in here for about 5-10 minutes. But, again, I'm just trying to show you exactly what you would need to do. Okay, same thing of how I was putting it on. I'm going to try and wipe it off. Just start right to rotating your spring. Put that cloth inside the coils. And then, of course, wipe down the guide rod. But everything is pretty much wiped down and clean. The only thing I actually didn't clean is the barrel bushing. Again, it's not a big problem. Just take, I have some little pre-cut little uh, cotton swabs. So, take that. Again, wipe down any kind of cleaner that you put on. But overall, this gun is now ready to put back together. Okay. So, of course, what we're going to start out with is we're going to take our barrel. Oh, and um, something else I wanted to mention before we started putting this back together. As you notice, I didn't use any oil. Now, it's not entirely good to use oil to clean your firearm. Um, of course it leaves, if it's really gunked up in there, it's just going to attract more powder and more dirt and it, it's you're going to have to clean your gun a whole lot more than you did the first time. So what I always suggest is even if you're going to use a, a, some oil, okay, just for lubricating the firearm, what I use is literally, uh, I use Ballistol if I use anything, it's a good multi-purpose lubricant, but the amount that I would use is literally that little spray, okay? There's not really, you don't need a whole awful lot, okay? In a lot of places, again, I just put it on my slide rail. And that's really it. Maybe even where the barrel meets, meets the slide, okay? The bushing. But that's, that's about it. That's all you really want to oil your gun with. You don't need a whole bunch in there. Again, this Cerakote on this firearm acts as a natural lubricant. So, again, you don't really have to worry about it so much. But what I'm going to do to put this back together is I'm going to start off with my barrel. Again, make sure that barrel lug is down. And I'm going to insert it into the front of the slide. And let it push all the way back and make sure that it seats properly. And then flip that barrel lug up. Okay, once you've done that, take your barrel bushing again. If you're holding it with the barrel going away from you, you want to make sure that the little slot on the barrel bushing is pointed to the right. That way that little nub right here can slide right in. Once you do that, just rotate it off to the left. That way it locks in. Then what I do is I'll take my recoil spring and my guide rod. Again, remember how I mentioned there's an end that's kind of compounded so it's flat. And then this end just kind of ends abruptly. This flat end is going to go on your recoil spring. Okay. Now go ahead and put your recoil spring through. Make sure that the guide rod, there is this little notch. Okay. And you want that to go towards the barrel. That way it lays along it. After you've done that, this is where you would take your slide. And what I do is I put my thumb basically on the spring and on the guide rod. And I just reconnect my slide rails. And something to mention, there's this little hook back here. Okay, 
is part of the safety system, but just push that down. Okay, that way your slide will go on. Then line up that little crescent that's after the slide catch. Okay, your barrel lug should be right in place, but if you see your barrel too far up like that, you need to make sure that you push it back, okay? That way you can look down into that uh, takedown pinhole and you can see that, that barrel lug. So I'm just gonna go ahead and insert it. What I do is I bring this to the top of that little hook where that detent pin is, make sure that's lined up, and I just push up, okay? And, I, and literally it'll go right into place. Once I'm done with that, just bring up your slide, take your spring plunger, put it on, depress that spring, and then move your barrel bushing over it. Now, of course, it's not in line yet. Press it down again so that it clicks into place. But once you do that, your Sig Sauer is ready for concealed carry or taken out to the range. All right, now we're gonna go over some additional details for the SIG 1911 Scorpion Edition. First off, you could tell just by looking at this firearm, and you saw it in the cleaning video, that um, it's got this flat dark earth finish to it, which is signature to the Scorpion line of firearms. SIG has an entire line of Scorpion models, everything from the P938 up to the 1911 like this, that are specially designed with the Scorpion finish, which would be the flat dark earth coloring, and then it's also got a Cerakote coating on it to help improve durability and lubricity, which means that it's gonna last longer, it's gonna um, corrode less and wear less, and that uh, you can use less lubrication on this firearm because that coating is gonna help everything move a little bit better. Now, this is a high-end 1911, even though it's uh, come straight from the factory, all the factory models are pretty much the same. Now, Scorpion has been coming out for a number of years now, so you're gonna find some variances in between models here, like some of the models, for example, have a curved trigger, whereas this one has a flat face trigger. This is a little bit older model of the Scorpion, but other than that, um, they're pretty much all the same. You can see here, you've got the skeletonized hammer, you've got these low profile Sig Light night sights, which are absolutely amazing. Um, of course, you can change those out if you want to later on and you've got the uh, curved top of the slide here to help reduce any glare if you're in bright conditions. Um, moving on over here to the slide, I like that you've got front slide serrations here. Um, they're pretty minimal up front here, but of course you've got great rear slide serrations back here. You have the external extractor right there, and um, the ejection port is uh, scalloped so that it reduces any chance of a uh, failure to feed there. Now on this model, the barrel is a 4.25 inch barrel, but they do have what SIG refers to as the full size, which would be the five inch uh, model um, or barrel length on that one, which uh, most 1911 people would call the government size, which would be the full size 1911. Now this model has an accessory rail here, although uh, SIG does have a Scorpion version of the 1911 that does not have the accessory rail. Like I mentioned before, you'll see some with different triggers. And of course, there's aftermarket 1911 triggers that you can put on this. One that I saw um, in doing some research on this firearm was a skeletonized curved trigger that uh, was pretty um, good looking uh, just as far as aesthetics go. Now here on the grips, you've got these Hogue grips here. This uh, texturing that's on here is really aggressive and it's referred to as piranha grips uh, for the obvious reason that they're pretty aggressive. Um, here you've got your slide release, which for me, on uh, most 1911s, just the way uh, my hands, you know, uh, hand size goes, is not easy to get to. Um, just with the thumb, I have to adjust my hand to reach that. Um, but the thumb safety itself is actually really easy to manipulate for me. Send the slide forward here. And so now we've got the uh, hammer back. Now, like I said, the skeletonized hammer, and you've got the uh, beaver tail here, which is slightly extended to help reduce any kind of slide bite that you would get. That's also going to be our back strap safety. Um, and then you've got the thumb safety here, which is extremely easy to manipulate, and it's ambidextrous. So whether you're right or left-handed, you'll be able to uh, use that thumb safety there. This is the magazine release button, of course, um, which sticks out a little bit, uh, but not past the grips. So it's not protruding out past the grips there. 
Um, an interesting note about these grips is that these are specialized grips made by Hogue that uh, actually create a bit of a magwell here. So when you're doing a magazine change, it's easier to get that magazine in there um, quickly, especially important if you're in a combat scenario. Now this is a single stack uh, 45 magazine here. It holds eight rounds plus one in the chamber. It, um, this is the standard Scorpion magazine. It's got a little bit of a pinky extension here, but you can get aftermarket um, magazines, which will give you uh, more magazine capacity. However, what my recommendation would be is to just use Sig Sauer's magazines that they make for this 1911. That's going to make sure that you get the best function from those magazines and reduce any chances of failure to feeds. Um, the Sig Sauer Scorpion 1911, definitely something to look into adding to your collection if you don't mind shelling out somewhere between $1,100 to $1,300, depending on which specific model you happen to pick up. Um, of course, there's always good deals to be found online. So if you're interested in this, I'd suggest scouring those online shops uh, for a little while before you just go ahead and buy one. But it's a great firearm, extremely high quality that SIG is known for. And again, the proven combat effectiveness of the 1911. I think this makes a great concealed carry, home defense, or even an entry-level competition 1911. That's all for today. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, just hit the subscribe button down below for more videos on firearms cleaning and care, uh, concealed carry best practices, and how to utilize the full line of urban carry products. If you found this video useful, share it with your friends on social media. All right, that's it for today, guys. Until next time, keep calm and return fire.